Keeping Anne Marie by Dave Sheesby. Found you. Uh, come in. It's Mrs. Um... Franks. Joyce Marilyn. Ah. Only I don't do the Joyce. Shall I sit here then? Uh, please take a seat. Ta. Uh, my assistant tells me it's urgent. I barged in a bit. Sorry in that. Only it's vital, see? I can only give you five minutes, I'm afraid. She didn't like it one bit. After that, if you still wish to proceed, then you'll have to make an appointment. You don't remember me, do you? I'm sorry? I was here before. I told her downstairs. She said you were brill names and faces. Um... You really don't remember, do you? And oddly, I didn't remember. Must be slipping. But then I suddenly did. A face, a voice, perhaps. The general demeanour. I'm good on demeanours. I remembered Marilyn Franks. Derek, the then boyfriend. Mr Wonderful, not. <laughs> you nailed him proper, Mr Croson. I've never forgotten his face. Bastard had to pay up. Mind if I smoke on him? A bit edgy. Oh, yeah. You do mind. Of course, in this line of work, you do face a lot of different demeanours. It's raw human nature in action at the point of fracture in here. Every day. Matrimonial solicitor. The title has the ring of a tolling bell. There's this joke. I think I first heard it on the golf course. Dave Wicks of Turner, Wicks and Larson. Brilliant on employment cases, I'm told. Plays off ten, too. Beyond me. Tells me these long, shaggy jokes while we look for my ball. So, there's this chappy having marital problems and he goes on holiday to Ireland to think things over, where, walking along a lonely country road, he sees a leprechaun asleep under a tree. But the leprechaun wakes up suddenly, sees him and says, since you've caught me like this, you're entitled to one wish, which me being a lucky leprechaun, you will be granted. So the man thinks a moment, then he says... I'd like a four-lane motorway across the Atlantic to New York and a Rolls-Royce to drive in with two gorgeous young ladies in the back seat, please. And the leprechaun looks at him and says, You know, to be sure, that's not an easy one, me being only a little leprechaun. Have you by any chance another wish? And the man says, Well, can you get me a cheap, easy, painless, quick divorce? And the leprechaun looks at him for a moment and says, your motorway. How many lanes was it now? Going to start the clock then. Sorry? I've not forgotten from last time. The time and money bit. Oh, so I see. Right, I do have appointments piling up. <clears throat> Tricky this. In your own time. Uh, where to start, like? Well, just an outline and then maybe you can come back. Right. I want to have a baby for this couple and I want to put some in writing on cash side and the rest. Good heavens. What's up? Well... Not one I get every day, shall we say? Thought you might be able to help, see? Ah. Uh, no, frankly. What? I can't, basically. Why not? You don't approve, or what? I'm not allowed. I can pay. Only a bit of paper, isn't it? Won't take long. I'm not allowed, by law, to further an arrangement such as the one you're considering. Sorry, Mrs Franks. You're having me on. I'm not. In America, we would be perfectly free to proceed, but in Britain, I'm afraid, there is no legal place for a surrogacy contract in law. Ugh, I hate that word. Sounds like a friggin' illness. I'm not doing this for money, you know. It's a favour, this. Look, I'm really sorry I can't help further. I'm still going to do it. Well, that's your choice, of course. It's important. Hmm. Think very carefully about what you're doing. So much can go wrong. There are tripwires out there, believe me. I have to say that unless you're very fortunate, it might well end in tears. There. Pure personal opinion, of course. Yes. Well, you haven't put me off, Mr Crossan. I didn't mean to. Sounded like it to me. Anyway, ta for seeing me. You're a good bloke. You haven't forgotten what you did for me before. And you can stop the clock now. Oh, consider it never started, all right? Sound. Ta. Take care.
Thirty years I've been fielding at cover in the game of marriage. A short youthful spell on conveyancing and onto the spouses forevermore. The door opens and in they come with their barely concealed anger, stroke grief, stroke misery, stroke fear, stroke desolation, stroke loss, stroke hate, stroke disappointment, stroke, 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 some dizzy emotional plateau on which they have come to rest, albeit temporarily, before moving on. They always move on. I tell them they will. And they come back if they win the first time. Loyalty to your lawyer. Like Marilyn Franks. A little paternity job, 12 years ago. Routine. And here she was again. And what's more, I had the distinctly clear impression that she would be back. Hello? It's Marilyn Franks, Eric. She was here last July time. I remember. Sound. Yeah. <laughs> what about her? She's in reception. Mm. She insists on seeing you. Says she'll wait here till, I quote, is knocking off time. Sure, where to go? Don't tempt me. She knows well enough by now. One little trick I have, being pickled as I am in the dark wine vinegar of human relationships, if I sense a certain shyness of clients to reveal the full misery, I point to my left-hand desk drawer and tell them about the £20 note that is waiting there and which they can have if I am shocked by anything they say. When I started, it was a fiver. So far, I have never paid out. Anne says it's because I'm too mean. <laughs> Marilyn Franks was not the type, of course, to hide anything. I'm in dead trouble, Mr Croson. And let me guess. You went ahead with your arrangement. Yeah, well, I said I would. You did? I wrote it down, actually. Here we are. Is that my file, then? Keeping notes. Standard practice. I've got a baby girl, Anne-Marie, ten days ago. And now, I don't want to give her over to this couple, but they say they'll have me up in court if I don't. They reckon Anne-Marie's theirs. They can't take her, can they, Mr Croson? Look, Mrs Franks... She's my baby. There's no way they can take her, is there? Tell me, Mr Croson. The law on these things... I'm not letting them. Please. They'll have to kill me first. I'll try and calm down. She's my little baby. They can't take her away. Oh, God. I'm sorry. I never blub. I'm sure we can sort this out. Sort it out? What does that mean? You're going to have to tell me the whole story, Mrs Franks. From the beginning. They can't take her, can they? Can they? She's mine. Please. Just tell me about what happened after you last saw me. You said it'd end in tears. This couple? The Manninghams. They live in Norwich, a big house. Norwich? Yeah. I got lost first time I went. I've sometimes thought, if only there were no children, then the fractures, when they come, would be so much easier. Not that they're straightforward, of course, with just the two. It's all that tearing and burning of clothes. A smashing of property, abusive late-night phone calls, physical attacks in private and public places, the shouting and screaming, clawing, kicking and grabbing. I've heard it all. I've drawers full of it. The bloody train was miles late and then I got the wrong bus. They talk funny there. I couldn't understand what the rotten driver said. Hang on a minute, let's... I'm not uh... used to travel, me. I've been to Spain with our Dorian, but she was puking up every day and we came home early. She hates planes. Seven brandies. I warned her. I... Where was I? Norwich. Yeah, wandering around, trying to find this house. I nearly jacked it in and came home. But you didn't. No. It's nice where they live. They were all right to me. They were lovely. I wish I'd gone home, though. Now. My mum warned me, shouting. Too late, isn't it? I spent the cash, by the way. But then there's the children. The screaming and shouting behind closed doors and violent snatches at school gates and endless rough rude droppings off. I've even once had a hurled baby. Luckily, it was caught. A child is a piece of ammo. Now, Anne-Marie was a variation on a theme. I could have ended it there. I could have recommended Marilyn Franks to someone like David Bagley at Bagley, Reeves and Bullock. First class on custody jobs. 
but I didn't. I suppose I wanted a taste of something a bit out of the ordinary, a change from the run-of-the-mill cat-and-dog fights I spend my days on. But what I didn't see coming was the way Marilyn Franks's troubles would spill into my own. Business and personal. Never the twain. I'll have to have a fag. I'm quivering, look. That's a quiver, that. Take your time. <clears throat> now, the Manninghams. Norwich. Am I right? Uh, is it Tim? Marilyn, at last. We were a bit concerned. Come in, please. I got lost. A train were late. Oh, dear. Let me take your coat. Oh, this bus driver. I've been all over. You should have taken a taxi. Oh, don't do taxis, me. Please, come through. Vanessa's making some tea. I expect you to manage a drink. Wouldn't say no. Come through, please. Sit down. Get near the fire. It's an awfully cold day, isn't it? Brass monkey when I left home this morning. <laughs> so, uh, you've never been here before? What? To Norwich? No. Marilyn, so glad you got here. We were worried. Like I say, I... She took a bus, darling. Good grief, we'd have paid for a taxi. Now, milk and sugar? Three, please. Three. Sweet tooth. Oh, there we are. Mm. <coughs> nice fire. They're real logs, right? We were so thrilled when you phoned. You've no idea what this means to us. Yeah. Right. It's good. Such a pity you live so far away. Um, where is it exactly? Wombwell. That's Barnsley, isn't it? The agent told us. Nearish. It's a dump. Still, never lived anywhere else, me. And you uh, have a child already? Ah, uh, Janice, yeah. But no husband? Partner, darling. Mm -hmm. There's Jack, but uh, he doesn't count. I like your garden. Oh. Dead big, isn't it? Those trees yours? Yes, Canadian beach. Quite a picture in the autumn, aren't they, Van? More tea, Marilyn. Well, not for me, Ta. I should be up and down chronic to love. Shall we talk about our plans? Uh, let the lady get her breath. Why not? It's, it's what I've come for, isn't it? We have an excellent doctor on standby. Awfully experienced. Right. Introducing Tim's sperm will be carried out in the most efficient and safe way. We will spare no expense, I do assure you. Introduce. It's quite painless. Darling, Marilyn I'm told uh, it's a sort of spoon thing. Darling, please. We can phone Miriam now, actually, to fix a time for your visit. Miriam? The doctor. A woman? Not a problem, is it? <laughs> we are going a little bit quick. We're so excited. I, I want to help you. Ever since I've known I was never going to... To be, you know, never. Right. Awful for you. But now you've got me. God, yes. We are so lucky. Blessed. Darling. Hmm? Oh, yes, the financial side. Can we discuss that? If you want. Why not? We thought eight. Eight? Eight, yes. It's what the agency recommends. It's not about money, this, you know. Of course not. It's to help you. Let's get it right. Absolutely. Yeah, well, it's got to be said. And we are awfully grateful. And we want to thank you. The financial arrangements seem important, that's all. I could do with it too, actually. So, 8,000. Six when the pregnancy is confirmed and two on delivery. <laughs> so to speak. <laughs> <laughs> What's funny? Well, just the word. In this context. I hope you like lasses. Sorry? It'll be a girl, bound to be. Runs in our family, that. I see. Of course, the sperm is the main factor in determining gender. Isn't that right, Tim? Are you bothered either way, like? A healthy little baby is all I want. Believe me, Marilyn. Isn't it, Tim? Is that your cat? What? Aunt Lorne there. General Alife. We named her after the Arabic gardens in Granada. We love Andalusia. Mm. Can't stand cats, me. They slink, don't they? I like dogs, though. Jack's got a big Labrador, calls it Arthur. Pixie. 
I keep telling him it's for chop. Won't listen. Still, it got me on the right train this morning. <laughs> Jolly good for us. Mm. Well... We thought we might agree for you to give us the baby a week after the birth. A week? Is that all right for you? Should be. You could have it in writing, only you can't. Croson reckons it can't be done. Sorry. Croson is... Lawyer in Barnsley. He's sound. Said he could do it in America, but not in Wombwell. I don't think we need the law on this. Best to keep it friendly and informal. Don't you agree? Mm. I suppose so. It's just that he were dead good when I had to clobber Derek over our Janice. Long story. How do you spell it? What? Wombwell. It's not W-O-M-B, is it, by any chance? Yeah. How odd. How do you mean? Well, uh, <laughs> appropriate. He means for us. What? Oh, yeah. Right, laugh. So, you went ahead. Felt right, yeah. I liked him, Tim and Vanessa. Dead posh, but they were nice to me. They used to come and see me, Mr Croson, when I got pregnant, like. He were ever so nice to me. It worked, then. The spoon method. Easy. First time. Right. Saved a bit of bother dragging off to Norwich to see this Miriam. Quite. Oh, their faces. When they came to my house. Jack thought they were right, pair. <laughs> He's not good with that type. Me, I'm dead straight with all comers. You know that. I do. Jack took Tim to a big drum for a pint and there were a fight in pool room. <sighs> no knew in that, mind you. So, you got on? Tim came up on his own once. With these flowers. Big yellow jobs. He was so nice. He so much wanted to be a dad. I feel terrible, Mr Croson. I just wish it hadn't turned out this way. I hate what I'm doing. But eventually, then, you had a baby, um... Anne-Marie. I told him it'd be a little lass. They were crazy about her when they first saw her. And me. I called her after that Frenchy pop singer. Have you seen her? Uh, no, missed that. So, uh, they've been up since the birth. They came straight after she were born. It was all arranged. I told you that bit. Hold her that way a shade, Marilyn. Like this? Fine. There. Good. Baby. Hello, baby. Lovely. Can I hold her? What? It would be so nice to have a first picture here. Well, uh... I mean, she is going to be ours very soon, isn't she? Right. Right. By the window, darling, OK? May I take her? Please? The light's better there. Uh, I, there, there, there. Isn't she lovely? <laughs> Isn't she just perfect? Oh, there, there. Oh, look, she's smiling, Tim. Look. Hold still. Look at the camera van. Big smile, baby. Great. Uh, oh, there you are. Oh, come on, darling. There we go. Oh. We'll come back next Tuesday to your home. You will be out of here by then. I'll be out by tomorrow, Chuck. Try and stop me. And we will, of course, have the balance. Sorry? The rest of the mummy. A Tuesday. Right. Are you all right, Marilyn? What? Yeah. OK. Only you look a little pale. Good grief. The woman's given birth to a gorgeous baby less than 24 hours ago. I mean, you try it. Sorry. <laughs> oh. oh. Maybe we should go. Could I just talk to Tim for a bit? Do you mind? No. No. OK. Next week, then. Tuesday. Yeah. I'll wait in the car. So, you... She is lovely, isn't she? Oh, baby. Are you happy? Of course. What did you want to... Just that. Just that. You are her dad. 
I know. Well, I, I know, Marilyn. I, I know we've said this, but thank you for a wonderful, priceless gift. Really. Hey, now. Come on. What's wrong? Nothing. I'm all right. You'd best go. And they went back. I felt crap. There they were, drooling over my baby, and all the time I'd made up my mind. I wasn't going to let them have her. Ah. You'd decided by then. First time the nurse dumped her on my front. I just knew there was no way they were having her. But you didn't tell them when they came. I just couldn't. So how... I phoned him that uh, night when they got back. They weren't pleased. Oh, she were blabbing. I felt so sorry for what I was doing to him. He were ballistic. They're taking me to court, Mr Croson. They say we'd got a contract, but we haven't, cos we never wrote out down, did we? I mean, you said we couldn't. Not so simple, I'm afraid. A verbal promise is a contract in law. Hold on. I can't have a contract, but I've got one. Makes no piggin sense, that. You can't have a surrogacy contract, but a promise is still a promise. Even about a baby, as far as the law goes. They can't pursue it. They are. They're not having her. There's no way in the world it'd be stealing, wouldn't it? Think about it. She's my baby. Hmm. It's tricky. Can I get legal what's it, like before? I can try. I'm skint, me. On benefits. Jack might help. Uh, can I ask about the money you received? Six grand up front. Blued it. Mm. Gave some to my mum and dad. He's got this chest front pit. It's gone. I'll do anything, Mr Croson. They're not having my Anne-Marie. I'll kill anybody who tries to take her. I hope it doesn't get to murder. I'd have to find you another solicitor. What? Uh, sorry, a joke. <sighs> When do we get to court, then? I'm not sure. This is a very unusual case. May not even get that far. What? I'll talk to you again. Make an appointment for tomorrow. Uh, with children involved, the law gets very nervous. The welfare might well move in first. Social? Not them. Bloody hell. Fire. Like I say, it may take... Have you got any kids, Mr Crossin? Ah, um... No. Then you won't know how I feel, will you? Won't I? No offence, like. And that was when the line was crossed. The very moment. April's always a bad month. The green shooting trees, the daffs in the parks, the light on the warm evening pavements always brings back the memories. The hospital visits. Christopher will be 21 now. Me and Anne don't often mention him. There's no mantelpiece photograph. Not now. And anyway, what can you say? Four years old. I can't think of anything worse for anybody. But time passes. Life goes on. Work flows into the yawning gap. Here come the splintered spouses and rocking relationships and benighted kids. Could feel bitter, I suppose, but I've learned not to judge. Even in the worst moments. I always hold on. Jerry Brand at Brand and Brand one tipsy Christmas lunch once referred to me as Iceberg Eric, the permafrost practitioner. But underneath, sometimes. I wish Marilyn Franks hadn't said what she said, but then I'm not being fair on her. How can she have known about her poor old solicitor's little loss? Christopher. Like the nurse said, the pretty one with the blue eyes and neat blonde fringe, the one on duty that last night. She said he was a little gem of a boy. A little gem. And she said she sometimes did not know how she could really go on doing the job. I saw her once, not long after, in the city centre, coming out of Lockyer's, and she smiled and 
said hello and how are you and all that. She was in a nurse's uniform, so she must have carried on. Of course. Of course she did. People do. Marilyn Franks did. Mrs. Franks? Might be. Jonathan Morris. I'm from Headlines. We're a local agency, sort of freelance. Local stories tuned up to the Nationals. You've lost me, love. Newspaper. Newspaper? What do you want, Jesus? <laughs> Not quite. Don't do miracles, but do do lucky days. Could be yours. What? Can I come in and have a chat? What about? Is your new baby here? What new baby? What's she called? Anne, isn't it? Now, what is this? There'll be a lot of interest in your situation, Marilyn. Can we not talk inside? Jack. No, Jonathan. Blabbing it, pub. Stupid bastard. We might be prepared to offer a cash payment, especially if we can get some pictures. What can you lose? Sod off. Mrs. Franks? You can't keep something like this secret. Not now. People will want to know more. You must see that. Might be able to get some paper to go to four figures for your side of the story, Mrs. Franks. Let's talk about this, please. Yes? It's Marilyn Franks for you, Eric. She sounds very agitated. Put it through. Mr. Crawson. Mrs. Franks. Newspaper kids here, asking stuff. What's happening? What shall I do? Put him on. He's not in the house. He's outside. I shut door. Don't let him in. Uh, stay where you are. But I need to go to the shops. I need some fags for a start. And I have to pick Janice up from school. I can't stay here. Just don't talk to anybody. He's bloody talking cash. Is he? How much? I don't know. Said four figures. What's he want? Your story, Mrs. Frank, seems to have hit the streets. There'll be others. Think locusts swarming. What? Think bears and honey. You got pissed up at lunchtime or what? I think you'd better come and see me again. It's Jack this. What? Jack must have been blabbing it around. I warned him. Very unwise. Uh, what newspaper did he say? No idea. Mm. Said he could sell my story. Do you want to sell it? Eh? Or do you want to sell your story? No. Good. Not yet, anyway. Ah. I'm only winding you up. Money could come in handy, though. I strongly advise you to say nothing to anybody. Believe me, least of all the press, I think Anne-Marie is going to be made a ward of court. Almost certain now this has gone public. Well, what's that, then? I have to give her up, or what? Uh, she'll stay at home with you until a judge decides what's best. Listen very carefully. Just don't do anything which will put you in a bad light, especially with newspapers and checkbooks. I need a fag, though. I'm not staying in. There's a woman out there now. I can see him. They're frigging waving at me. They can't force you to talk. But you know me. I say things, Mr. Crawson. I can't help myself, honest. Sorry. The world as a soap. In all my years of practice, I have never ever read any press account of any case which accurately reflected what really went on. They haven't got the space. They haven't got the imagination. They haven't got the time. I know some journalists, nice people, always looking at their watches, always waving goodbye. And now here they were, and just behind them, the social services, sailing in on their customary heavy, well-intentioned, self-righteous and caring little raft. What's going to happen, Mr Croson? There's to be a case. We'll have to go to London, family division. When, though? Probably within a matter of days. The law has a habit of speeding up in these matters. What happens then? Hmm. Good question. Will it mean I lose her? Uh, I, um, I can't say for certain. There's no way. No way. No way. No way. Look, there's every chance that you will keep the child. But I have to tell you the possibility of other outcomes. And there'll be the press and telly to contend with. They'll love this. We're going to have to be very careful. Anything. 
But anything you say to anybody about this could jeopardise your chances. If you give the judge any inkling that you did this for money and to tell your story and to create cheap publicity for yourself, it will count against you. It could mean you do lose your Anne-Marie. What shall I wear? Sorry? In this court place. Well, it's... Uh... Will the judge have a wig thing or what? I don't like this. Do I have to go? Listen. The word is calm, sincere, loving, respectable, caring mum, which is six, but no matter. You'll be there, though. Of course. You won't be named. No one will be named. It's for Anne-Marie's sake. I told you they were careful. But the papers... Oh, try and forget the bloody press, please. You'll have to hold my hand, like my dad used to when I were a little girl. On the day, Marilyn Franks wore a totally unsuitable short black skirt, high heels and enough eyeliner for ten. I was going to tell her beforehand about the law and how it's always a battle not for truth, just for victory. A win, preferably. A draw, at best. A loss, unthinkable. In the end, I settled for her promising to let me do the talking, as far as the court permitted, and when it was her turn, to speak clearly and as far as possible, truthfully. Above all, no shouting and definitely no swearing. The law as drama. Enter stage left. A woman judge? Maybe that would help. And no wig, either. <clears throat> I have heard the evidence today and had some difficulty as the tale has unfolded in putting aside my feelings of puzzlement, how grown people, in this case the parties to this, shall we call it, bargain, could possibly have seen it wise, tenable and in any way a worthy project to embark upon. In saying this, I am aware that agreements like this one are not uncommon, often within families and I'm reliably informed by the press, they do go forward to a successful conclusion in which all parties remain content and fulfilled. Often I'm also made aware these arrangements are made in secret and with discreet respect for all concerned. And I have to concede I cannot condemn such arrangements. But in this case, with a financial transaction involved, I have to ask serious questions. And the most serious question, indeed the sole important question, centres on the future welfare, happiness and health of the child. At this point, I, I must say I feel not a little like a certain judge whose famous solution in the case of disputed maternity is etched deep in our culture and storytelling. But unlike that judge, I do not feel it is appropriate for me at this point to request a piece of chalk and the baby concerned and then to ask the parties to step forward and each take a tiny hand. And maybe that was a solution which, in spite of its wisdom and cleverness, was in some ways cruel and, well, I have to say, somewhat patriarchal. I'm lost. Shh. We're not there yet. What's she on about chalk for? This digression, in a sense, helps me to focus on my basic question, which is, what is the best interest for the child? I have to ask myself, would she be better off with the couple referred to in this case as M, who you could argue would provide a stable, loving, and in this case, more affluent upbringing? After all, there are two of them, and this appears to be a stable married relationship. And these personal circumstances and the household's intellectual and educated refinements, it could be argued, are clear and positive advantages in the upbringing of a child. On the other side, there is the natural mother, who has successfully bonded with her daughter from the moment of birth, but whose single parent status, and notably poor financial and environmental circumstances, coming as she does from a small community, damaged by economic decline, largely in the extractive industries, are in marked contrast to the fathers. One other factor is of importance, and that is the sincere regret the mother now feels 
both for the pain she's caused and her own inability to live up to her best intentions. All these things weighed in the balance. I think the duty of this court is to award the care and control of this baby to her natural mother. What? What's up now? It's over. <laughs> can I keep her, Mr. Croson? I can, can't I? Is that what she said? You're smiling. It's what she said, eventually. I'm smiling. Shall we now face the music? Thank you. Thank you. I... Oh, dear. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> On behalf of my client, what you mean? on no, behalf of, <laughs> please, I have to say, my client is very relieved and pleased that this How judgment. How much did you agree, Marilyn? Look, the if I can, uh, would you try again giving the charge, uh, Marilyn? I don't think there's my point in this. Don't leave me, Mr. Crossan, please. I don't know what to say. Thank you, Marilyn. Thank you. Thank you very much. Walking out into the sunlight that afternoon with Marilyn Franks, I felt fatigue and relief and then emptiness. This woman and this child. I should have been pleased. We had won. She got what she wanted. I've tried not to judge. I've lived by it. There's only people and what we do. And when it goes wrong, it has to be dealt with as best we can. Just people. I've tried to bear this in mind in all my days behind my polished brown mahogany desk with its sad little £20 note in the secret tell-me-and-shock-me drawer. Any comment your client would care to make at all? The media got their story in the end. Marilyn sold it to the nearest bidder. Couldn't resist it, could she? But by then it was looking a bit dog-eared and crumpled and I don't think she got much. I've seen her only once since, in some chemists where Anne had sent me to get some painkiller tablets at the only shop open one Sunday afternoon across town. And there she was, with Anne-Marie in a pushchair. And I got that same rough smile once again. The one she'd first flashed the day she barged into my office. Quivering, as she would put it. I'm all right, skint as ever. This is Anne-Marie. Lovely. Come round at two o'clock tonight, though. Ah, she's a bit wakeful. <laughs> I like it, a bit wakeful. You're a star, you, aren't you? <laughs> How about your partner? Jack, daft as ever. We've moved here now. Pit went, didn't it? Told him it would. He does pork pies now. How was your lark? Much the same. I saw the papers. Oh, picture made me look chuffing, dog rough. All water under, eh? Right. You look a bit stressed over, Mr. Croson. Do I? Still at that office? Without their woman on reception? Still there. Ditto Jean Fanshawe. Mm. I think about it sometimes. What I did. If it helps, so do I. That judge. She had a gob on her, eh? She was on your side, in the end. Oh, I didn't understand half of it. She came round to it slowly. They tend to do that. You don't like me, do you? Sorry? You never said, but you didn't like what I did. Did you? Didn't I? You think I'm a selfish little bastard? Do I? Stop asking me back. Admit it. I'm not bothered what you say, me. You once said to me... What? You once asked me if I had any children. Did I? And I said, no, I hadn't. But I wasn't telling you the truth. Is that right? We did have a little boy. Christopher. A long time ago now. He died when he was four. He was ill for a long time. We found it very hard. I don't really know why I'm telling you this now. Perhaps I wanted to tell you before, at the time. Might have been better if I had. I... I'm afraid of being overwhelmed again. To mention it would be too... Well, you know. 
There you are. I did understand what it could feel like to lose a child. I'm sorry. I didn't know, though, did I? What I didn't understand was the desire to give one away. I am a bit out of touch. I read somewhere it happens every week. No tears at all. I can't grasp that. Old-fashioned, I know. I thought I could do it, at first. I know. I thought I could help them. I never really explained it to you properly. I thought I could help them have what they so much wanted. Changing my mind like that. I wanted you to say it in court. I mean, you did, but I wanted you to shout it. Seems we never quite levelled with each other, Marilyn. Right. You know, at the time, there was one other thing I wanted to shout too. But I held it back. That's your trouble, you. Probably. My wife calls me the brick wall. She says I'm there for people to chuck their mud out and leave me to clear up the mess. Mm. Get paid for it, though, love. Sound? True. Brings in more than chuffing pork pies, eh? I wanted to warn you. I wanted to say that if you went through with this and then your son or daughter found out who their real mother was and tried to trace you and managed it and turned up on your doorstep one fine day and asked you face to face, why did you sell me? What would you do? What you didn't. I don't think it would have helped. If I really wanted to guide people, I would have been a priest, wouldn't I? <laughs> Dog collar wouldn't suit you, Mr Crawson. Don't think it would, no. <laughs> <laughs> right, I'm going to have to get this one home. They've given me this stuff for a night times. It won't work, still. Try out, eh? Take care, then. Lately, I've been thinking seriously about retirement. Thirty years, Anne tells me recently. Twice in one week, to be accurate, so somebody's counting. What does it all amount to, anyway? The law is all about adjustments and redress. They're never perfect and never enough. I sometimes feel I've been led by the law, by the nose, so to speak, down some rather cool, cold pathways of the heart. Outside the chemist that afternoon, I was briefly distracted by a young couple kissing passionately under a lamppost. And I remember distinctly finding myself actually listening to their bickering, floating down from the future towards me, and the office door opening and one of their faces staring at me across the table. Maybe it is time for me to go. Mr. Croson? Come in, please. Sorry, I'm running a touch late. <laughs> Busy morning. Uh, shall I sit here? Please. Now, I think it best if you start at some point which you think might help me to get the total picture. In your own time, In Keeping Anne Marie by Dave Sheesby, Croson was played by Geoffrey Whitehead and Marilyn Franks by Hannah Storey. Vanessa was played by Carolyn Pickles, Tim by Sean Baker, The Judge by Gemma Churchill, and The Journalist by Simon Donaldson. The director was David Hunter. <laughs>